して、冷凍できる感じか。スタートです。あのこれもこれでスタートしてます。スタート。はい。Okay. Would you change the windows? Yes. Okay. Hey,、uh, good afternoon.、Uh, my name is Hideki、uh, Kurihara、uh, with NTT Communications.、Uh, today's、uh, session is about、uh, you know, how NTT Communications has、uh, been working on open stack areas. But before going to it, I just want to give you my、uh, introductions. Again, the, I'm the Vice President of、uh, Cloud Service NTT Communications,、uh, responsible for develop, development and the operation and delivery. And、uh, I've been in this industry since 1998, meaning that、uh, around that timing the hosting was、uh, get started. And since then I'm in this industry for almost 15 years. And、uh, at one point in time I was in the US and spending almost 10 years out there, and、uh, particularly in the Silicon Valley areas. And、uh, they do in the hosting business, et cetera. At that time, the, the, the The timing was very interesting. A dot com was、uh, going up and going down. Every time things happen,、uh, you know, my housing location、uh, was a little bit、uh, changed. What I mean by that, I was renting a house every two years, and the owner of the house sold my house because the go- property price goes up. Or when pro- property、uh, price goes down, they sold the house. So what happened was that、uh, you, you know, every two years, I, I needed to relocate. And、uh, at the end of the day, I, I relocated、uh, five times during my stay in the 10 years. And at、uh, that time, I was、uh, thinking that if, if there is some kind of you know, container technology, like、uh, <laughs> for the housing, I was so easy to relocate. But that was not possible that time. So, having said that,、uh, let, let me go into NTT Communications uh, uh, the, the explanation. Or be, before that,、uh, we NTT Communications has a Rugby teams. We, we play rugby as a company. And、uh, the one of the team members of、uh, our rugby team is actually participating in the national team, Japanese national teams. And、uh, you know that、uh, the, the national, not, not national,、uh, worldwide cup for the rugby is still going on. And、uh, the, we were not able to make it into the final, but we were able to beat a very strong、uh, country like South America. We are very proud of it. But what, 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 what good thing about that was that at the end of the day, people in the world wide know that、uh, Japan is doing, playing rugby. Before that, they didn't know that a、uh, you know, com- country like、uh, Japan is working on the rugby game or something like that. I got some f-、uh, email from my、uh, you know, good old days in the United States that、uh, congratulated, hey, Japan is doing rugby. I didn't know that. And by the way, the,、uh, to, uh, the, it, it is our honor and the pleasure to,、uh, for NTT Group to get、uh, selected as a A super user of uh, uh, OpenStack. The good thing about that is that, of course,、uh, we, we are pretty much happy about it, but in the meanwhile, that,、uh, you know, a country like APAC is playing a game of OpenStack, and the people start knowing that,、uh, you know, even that in this area, people are really working on the OpenStack industry promotion, et cetera. So, NTT Communication is doing rugby games, and also we are doing the OpenStack game too. So, the, beyond that,、uh, let me introduce、uh, a little more about NTT Group. And、uh, again, the beyond uh, rugby and、uh, OpenStack game, we at NTT Communication is doing some other games like Long Stance、uh, International Business, the communication, the ICT solution, and the voice and、uh, Other system integration services. And as you can see, that there are many e- e- brother and sister companies like NTT Data, and Docomo, and Dimension Data, and NTT as a holding. And the NTT holding company has a big、uh, laboratories, including a, a NTT software innovation centers. They've been working on the OpenStack things for the last many years, and the NTT Communication has been working with them. To promote、uh, technology and the business with them. So, just, j- just so you know. So, having said that,、uh, today's agenda is threefold.、Uh, you know what? The, the, we dare to put OpenStack、uh, multi private enterprise.、Uh, people tend to think that OpenStack is a more developer 
uh, technologies. But I, we are trying to take this open stack te technology to more enterprise arenas. And uh, been in, in this uh, open stack game for the last uh, five, six years with NTT laboratory groups. And uh, I just want to uh, get to what we have been th seeing in terms of enterprise requirements, enterprise requirements, meaning that, uh, you know, of course, it, it could include, in, include the developer requirements, but also CIO requirements, which has been overseeing the whole IT activity inside the company. And uh, the secondary, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what we have done with OpenStack areas. And, and also, I move into what we are doing today in terms of next gen activities and we'll do in the open stack with open stack. Yep. Can move. Here we go. So the, the this is about uh, uh, you know traditional pain points or you know typical enterprise multinational requirements coming in. As the, uh, the VNTT communication has been in the global long distance network services for long. We have many uh, multinational companies to have been working with. And the most deep pain point they got is very simple. Their environment with IT is so fragmented. Uh, if, we, if you're local in certain country, your IT system still be fragmented. But you know, the, like multinational who are acquiring new companies, while well, having some small office in oh. small office in southern country, uh, they got a different kind of IT system in the regions. A typical example is that a large company acquire a new company in a country, then they got a new IT systems to integrate. So the, the pain point was a lack of IT governance and the security privacy is not uh, you know, uniform over the, over the, their locations. And the, those uh, uh, fragmented IT situation is get them in a difficult position to how, how, how to manage the IT environment. So, so that way we, we've been uh, working with customers. Why, why don't you come to the crowd? I mean, meaning that uh, you know, cloud is basically globally standardized, and coming to the cloud means that you're gonna put you're gonna put your IT system on top on top of a standard. That, standardized uh, IT environment, IT governance is going to be get easier than you have a you know, different kind of IT system in the many other countries. So the message here is basically about uh, simplicity. Yeah, I bet uh, this simplicity thing has been there for the last 15 years uh, in terms of IT you know, goal. That we are trying to help customers to you know, get, uh, get to the sim a simple, simpler IT environment throughout the network server and applications. So the, the way we approach this is that, of course, the, creating these globally seamless services across the country is one thing, but one concept we have been deploying in, in terms of how we approach technically is to uh, let's make uh, all the infrastructure services programmable, automated, or you could say the software defined everything. Like we have a data center, collocation cloud, and cloud-based application services. With that, uh, manager services and security services. Used to be all those uh, uh, components are pretty much manually, ha manually handed, uh, deployment and operations. But uh, the way we, we envision is that, hey, let's make everything programmable. Everything going to have uh, APIs, etc., to internally or externally to customers, they could consume through the APIs to get some all, all those settings, etc. So th th this is something we've been working on. Then the based on that, uh, given that NTG uh, communications uh, uh, positioning, we are trying to make all the services, particularly uh, network and the. Uh, data center locations and the cloud services tied together as a seamless services so that the customer could uh, create a seamless uniform environment across their you know, locations. A again, I'm not going to be spending much time about, you know, talking about uh, uh, you know, kind of sales uh, presentations, but I just want to emphasize that most of the customers in terms of IT 
the challenges that they got the fragmented in all those locations and having connection around their uh, you know, fragmented location already is a pain. And then they got the IT system on top of it. Even though they go, they come to the cloud, all the workload cannot come to the a crowd at one point of time because they they got to have some you know uh, hardware to be depreciated for the next four or five years so the idea is to create environment where data center network and the crowd working together and the certain location may stay in the own play or certain uh, uh, workload may stay in locations or come to the crowd the, all those locations uh, is going to be tied together well with the network. So, the, uh, um, speaking about uh, our cloud services, uh, we get started with the cloud services since 2012. The, the, at that time, we, you know, the, we were trying to figure how we uh, approach the market. There, there are two kinds of uh, the business needs. Uh, what I mean by that, one is more real enterprise requirements where a customer want to uh, you know, come uh, take their workload to the cloud. Another scenario was that they're going to develop new uh, you know, application on the fly and uh, you know, create a new business uh, as they grow. So we created uh, one service called the Enterprise Cloud. Uh, which is more for uh, uh, enterprise workload, uh, traditional workload migration. On the other hand, cloud end, uh, sorry, cloud end, oh, I'm not good at, uh, cloud end going, ha has been focusing on more developer focused environment. And uh, the jet, then I move into more about, uh, you know, open stack activities on top of those two product portfolio. And uh, about Crowden, uh, we started using uh, the cloud stack from the beginning, but uh, in 2013, we, we deploy open stacks to enhance our services to meet certain kind of uh, customer demand. So, by the way, these are the, the list of activities. We've been working together with NTT SIC and NTT Group to uh, contribute to the OpenStack communities. The, again, the NTT communication was, has been uh, working on more enterprise arenas, and we've been providing the, uh, the enterprise requirements to the NTT uh, lab teams, and the NTT lab teams are working hard to create code and uh, you know, submit to the e communities. I'm not going to go down to the every detail, but uh, this activity has been there since 2012 uh, time frame. So, the first in implementation uh, in terms of OpenStack was done 2013, October. Uh, prior to that, uh, uh, we have a, a you know, more internet focus, you know, uh, public type of uh, cloud offering based on the cloud stack. But uh, we, we thought that it might make sense for us to start using OpenStack in more enterprise, enterprise uh, requirement. But at that time, we, we still think that uh, the uh, OpenStack could be a, a good, good for the more developer centric uh, you know, segmentation. So what we have done was that, that was a 2013 again, so we used the Nova and the Neutron things and to create what we call the virtual private cloud uh, services. These services pretty much natively connected, uh, this cloud natively connected to our cross network. And uh, so customer could, uh, uh, you know, ensure the security and the privacy for their uh, cloud activities. And uh, again, the uh, talk about uh, SDN, uh, uh, SDX thing uh, in prior presentation. Again, the concept was to, why not using all those SDN technology to creating a seamless network environment across the uh, clouds and, uh, and data center and the network. Oh. I don't know why. 
So, th th sorry, this is a very simple picture. At that time, what we have been thinking was that there was, a, of course, still is the there was neutron. And we really want to uh, deploy a SDN technology. And we, we knew that a certain uh, capability may be coming, should be coming from A technology, but a certain technology should be coming from B technology so that we can take the best of a breed in terms of SDN. So entity lab teams uh, created uh, some you know, multiple vendor plugins so that uh, you, you can pick and choose SDN technology or neutral native technology so that uh, we, we can you know, create services to the uh, customer's needs or more enterprise cloud needs. That's what we have done. What we did in 2003 years. So the based on that things, this is just a customer example. Uh, that was the, again, couple of years ago, uh, uh, IoT thing is just already big in the market uh, today, but at that time it was not so much a, a, a active. But uh, the, this, this is a custom example, a big construction company. There are a lot of building, air conditioning stuff and lighting stuff, and they really want to get some data from all those uh, their equipment and aggregate it into the clouds to do the real-time energy usage. It demand control and energy usage forecast, etc. Well, what they didn't want to do was to expose all the data to the internet or data coming from the internet. So uh, our idea of a private connection into uh, open stack uh, environment was really appealing. Was really appealing to them, and uh, this uh, you know system is still operational. So the. That was the, our first implementations around the 2013 and 14 year, years. The next thing is, uh, uh, f f from there, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the activities in, uh, we've been doing with NTG Lab. And uh, the, again, the, this, we didn't implement it yet. However, at that time, we thought that uh, you know the all the <coughs> you know storage solution needed to be there. So what we have done was the working with the entity SICs to create some global cluster replications. So at that time, before that, uh, that was not globally clustered, and a uh, uh, triple. Uh, a redundancy would be great uh, to ensure the, uh, the availability. But of course, uh, hey, Jesus, we got three more data inside the uh, uh, clouds, and we, we got uh, you know, m more cost to handle it. So uh, the NTG lab teams created the, what, they, what they call the erasure coding, and creating some kind of a, you know, lay the structure over cluster so that, uh, you know, total capacity needed is not going to be a three time, rather 1.5 or two. The, again, the, the, the effort here is basically, you know, all the enterprise really want to have uh, all those availability things on private things and uh, the, we, 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 we have been continued to provide that kind of uh, requirement back to NTG Lab so that uh, we work with the a, a community through NTG Lab to enhance OpenStack uh, uh, capabilities. So the, now I start moving into uh, IT technology key trend things. And uh, first and foremost, there are two kinds of IT. Uh, I don't think I really have to explain this in, in, in this room because most of you already know about it. But what just for the uh, Storyline wise, I'm going to get a little explanation on this. The left hand side, the yellow one, is the traditional workload IT. That was the, our original focus when we get started in 2013. And the, all the requirements coming from that segment is standardized and managed and cloud enabled, mission critical things, and how I can migrate to the cloud, etc. And uh, these days, uh, that, that things now uh, really fly. And uh, in the private cloud, they're actually getting very, very popular. And uh, the industry-wise, uh, the service provider-wise, we could basically most of the companies start uh, developing hosted private solutions to accommodate that need. But on the other hand, uh, you know, the, the typical wording, the cloud-native IT was there. 
And this has been there for, I would say, four or five years for the developer communities. But you know what? Most of the large incumbent company are not really good at it. You know, the, there's some statistics to say that, hey, how many agile developers you got inside the, you know, your enterprise? The percentage is very small. But uh, they know that they really got to go into that cloud native IT because of the competition coming from that big developer com communities or developers or startup who are uh, using cloud native type of IT, develop first, 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 utilizing new kind of uh, technology. Oh, I think it's listed here. And the, then what happens, what's happening right now is, uh, again, this is a typical things for the large enterprise. So you, you got a traditional IT you taken uh, to the crowds. And again, the message for the traditional IT is more standardized and the simplicity and unified governance, et cetera. But however, they really got to get on the, the carve out certain portion of IT uh, into the crowd native uh, setup so that they can better compete in the market. While you know, in the market and the startup, they've been already con crowd native IT and many incumbents start losing, for example, like uh, Netflix is doing great jobs against the uh, uh, cabling industries and that, that happening everywhere. So the thing here is that, uh, again, th this guy is a CIO things, you know, the, the, the guy who is managing IT. The job of this is to how, how they could continue to manage the traditional IT, the, the name of the game is the security and the compliance and you know, removing the, all the complexity from the IT to get the system stabilized. But in the meanwhile, they, they really have to do start uh, to implementing new type of IT to uh, increase the uh, speed of development or innovations and the growth to compete against the uh, new entrants. So the coming back to our situations, so we have enterprise cloud, which has been working on rather traditional IT. Then we do have a cloud end, which has been working on rather cloud native type of uh, setup. Then we decided to uh, you know, consolidate activity under enterprise cloud to, to, to target uh, enterprise customers or in enterprise CIOs for the, the help. So then the, given that, that positioning, uh, the, the concept of new activities, th this is going on as we speak and the deal in within a couple of months, is that uh, help customers, why do, I would say they help customers to standardize their environment and simplify the environment while enabling them to transform their IT to more modern architecture. Then the, the concept-wise, we got a four building block, create a four building block. One is cloud enable traditional ID, meaning that you know, traditional worker will come to the cloud, but they can enjoy the cloud you know, benefits like on demand and automated, all the API things they could leverage. But in the meanwhile, cloud native IT got to work together with cloud enable IT environment, uh, traditional IT environment, so that uh, they could use both sides. Then on top of that, what needed is to having some governance on top of it so that the IT manager can, IT CIO or IT manager could handle both situation well. The most of the typical situation is that you got two kinds of IT inside the companies and the, you get confused. One guy is doing A public, B public, C public, and the, in the meanwhile, you know, CIO using private cloud and the, they don't know what, what to handle it. So the operational governance is a, a key. The other one is globally similar since we been still work, uh, cater for the global multinational or even domestic large company, the seamless uh, service is always a key among the, their location, data center, on-premise and the cloud, uh, connected well uh, through the, the network. So the, we end up with uh, this uh, conceptual 
build, service building block. And then the, oh, two. the on the bottom, the, we want to continue to use the SDN technology. And on top of that, uh, we're going to have an open stack uh, based uh, multi channel crowds. And uh, beside it, uh, we creating hosted private cloud or bare metal environment or traditional workload are going to come. And this uh, SDN technology is supposed to be connecting those two environments tightly in terms of network so that they can build whatever network configuration they have today inside their on-premise. Then on top of that, uh, traditional IT workload may work in, in that regions or in cloud native could work in that way. And then on the top, uh, we, we, we are building out uh, some you know, multi-cloud uh, management uh, capability, which could manage uh, you know, the traditional IT or uh, cloud-native IT or somebody else's cloud so that uh, IT manager can get back the governance for their IT system. So having said that, so this is a little more elaboration of what we're doing. So on the base, uh, we have a SDN technology. Uh, then th this SDN technology plug into the OpenStack-based crowds. And uh, the SDN technology plug into the dedicated bare metal or in multi-hypervisor VMware or Microsoft Hyper-V environment where they could create a private cloud. So then the I move on to uh, why we want to continue to use the OpenStack or in this uh, uh, framework. The, the first one is that, the ecosystem. Well, let me put the ecosystem in twofold. One is, the, yes, there is a, a big community who can contribute to the growth of the uh, system. But uh, another thing is that the architecture to allow community to do it. In particular, what we like about this, this OpenStack is that the uh, architecture for simplicity, not in the sense of, uh, you know, very simple, rather not in the sense of, uh, you know, multiple components can work together in a simple way. The, what, what I mean by that is that uh, we do have a couple of OSS system, uh, uh, the managing the, our clouds uh, or other services, used to be very monolithic architecture we've been using. But these days, we, we start moving into more microservice type of OSS architectures. And uh, that, that model really fit into OpenStack uh, uh, te technology model. And the, thanks to that, uh, you know, ecosystem can work. Or you know, some, some partner come and develop their services, and we could plug their services into our you know, technology architecture to, to grow together. So that was the ecosystem thing. The second thing was the experience. Again, the NTT group and the NTT lab has been working on the OpenStack for long, and we want to leverage, and we have a lot of friends in there. And also, we've been uh, uh, managing OpenStack-based crowd since 2013, and we are very comfortable to take this technology to more enterprise level or, or services. Then the, in terms of how wise, uh, we continue to work on the enterprise requirements, meaning that uh, that, that service needs to be globally seamless. The platform availability is uh, always a key, and the governance and the compliance needs to be enabled inside the crowds. Then those three requirements need to uh, work together well with the OpenStack or OpenStack crowds, or if not, uh, we will work with the entity laboratory groups to push our idea back to the community. So, when you said that, let me get, get you a couple of examples. Those examples are very, I would say, not so big and subtle things included. But just to give you some ideas, uh, you know, we really have a, we want to take OpenStack clouds to the enterprise cloud level. One is uh, high availability things and uh, we all know that the current uh, implementation, NOVA cannot allow any kind of 
you know, V motion, etc. And, the, uh, and uh, the, in the industry, they created some kind of ecosystem software to uh, make it happen. And uh, we have developed something similar kind of software. And we natively deploy that functionality into our OpenStack systems. So we, we, we perhaps intend to, perhaps sometimes in the future, we want to open source it if the time is mature. The second thing is uh, more compli uh, governance things. And uh, you know, the, this is always a case uh, from enterprise. Uh, you know, they really want to control the spending, or they would like to have a uh, governance of how much, you know, how many VMs the, the IT folks are uh, using, etc. So the, what we have done with NTTSIC was to create an API filter. Uh, it could, uh, uh, you know, limit the number of resources, you know, uh, uh, develop, uh, user can create through the API. Again, this is not a kind of, uh, you know, control. It's more, more about uh, uh, governance things. And this is always uh, what uh, enterprise is uh, asking. The other thing is also uh, typical. This is a compliance things, and that, that, that is always the case. And uh, you know, taking an image from the clouds back to the, their you know, user a PC and deploy that into other VM means that you are violating some license. And uh, the, of course, uh, we could let the customers manage it, but uh, it doesn't make sense for us to you know, tell that, hey, only saying that, hey, you need to be careful. So what we have done was that creating some kind of disable capability to download so that the customer is not going to be mistakenly download the image and at the end of the day they get a compliance issues. The last thing is uh, again about the SDX and uh, again globally seamless and uh, Arcstra Universal One is the name of oh, Arcstra Universal One. Sorry, Axta Universal One is the name of our network services and the collocations. And what we have done is, we, 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 this is uh, going on. And uh, some has done already for the existing services is to connect our Axta Universal One services to the OpenStack uh, multi tenant environment in a native manner. The same thing is going to be a happen for the connection between collocation the SDN through the L2 connections. So the, again, by, by utilizing SDN technology, this kind of uh, uh, you know, configuration can be developed in a pretty much easy manner. The customer could uh, you know, make a connection from the portal, through the portal, or through the API to simplify the IT environment. So this is the current uh, picture our stack, and uh, you know the we have a you know this is a portion. It's not an entire architecture of our uh, next gen cloud we are developing and deploying very soon. But what we, in terms of uh, 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 component wise, we have a Horizon, and the Keystone, the Glass, and Noble Cinder uh, being deployed and used. And in terms of neutron, cellular wise, we have some compatible uh, capabilities uh, to you know, ensure that uh, this environment can work with open source communities. I think that uh, the prior session talked about this neutron implementations, compatible implementations. Then again, this neutron compatible environment is not only coming into the multi-tenant environment, but also that come into all the bare metal private hosted environment to create all the L2 connection or needed co connections among the uh, components. To, to summarize, I think I have just four or five minutes to left. So again, I just I summarize the, the activity around OpenStack related activities. One of our uh, subsidiaries, Gu, has been using uh, OpenStack for long. They got a big search engine portal uh, working today. And as I explained, that we, we implemented OpenStack uh, as 
capability into what we call the cloud and developer-centric uh, clouds since 2013. We are working on next-gen cloud activities. The OpenStack or OpenStack concept, OpenStack API standard is going to be the key for the design and the SDN is going to be deployed into OpenStack uh, stack. The last one is more about OpenStack community. So, last page is, is not, not a big thing. So, I had a hard time how, how I can you know, describe this. The point here is that uh, you know, we, we love the OpenStack, as I, I talk about in the beginning, we love the way the OpenStack built, the concept built, and that, that enable us to work together with the partners in terms of technically and in terms of uh, communities. So uh, we continue to work with the uh, OpenStack community or you know, even vendors who, who are trying to uh, comply into the OpenStack uh, you know, standard uh, so that uh, uh, we, we can grow together to serve the customers. So that's the end of my presentations and uh, I have a couple minutes and if you have a questions I could uh, answers if not uh, d d d d thank you so much so okay so thank you very much